Welcome back to the Next Gen Critic. Today's episode to be reviewed, Conspiracy. The terrifying invaders that almost made it. They never even got a name, did they? Aww. The first two points are lost because Will Wheaton and Denise Crosby are not in this show. As usual, they never make it to their planned destination. Should Jordy really be making jokes of this nature on the bridge while on duty? I say no, so minus one point. Jordy says I number one and minus one point for going to full impulse when Riker said warp six. Deanna wants to swim. Data says the holodeck can be programmed for an ocean. He should have said the ship has a swimming pool, so minus one point. Seriously, how can a ship that big not have a real pool? Especially considering the rumor that they have dolphins on the ship. Is Worf making a joke, or do Klingons just not like water? We will never find out. Star Trek loves using the number 47. They plug it in as many times as possible, and quite a bit here in this show. Now the computer man explains to Captain Picard what a code 47 message is. They use a voice print here. I think a retinal scan is better since Data forges the voice print all the time. Sadly, we never learn much about Walker Kill since he was old friends with Picard and Jack Crusher. But he is on to something big. In reality, Picard owes him lunch money and Walker Kill wants him to pay up. Why is Picard calling Data LaForge? Look closely, Data says there are seven planets. Minus one point here for the black squares on the console to block the glare. Now Data says there are six planets, so minus one point. This of course gives Data a chance to ramble. Minus one point for a single set of doors on the turbo lift. Look closely, you can see people in the windows of the conference room. Minus one point for opening credits being six minutes into the show. And it's taking him forever to get down this ramp. The card says, what the hell? Everyone thinks Riker says it all the time. Captain Riggs, Trilus Scott, and Walker Keel all warn Picard that something is going on in Starfleet. Picard mentions the planet Tau Ceti. We might hear about that later. Look closely. Trilus Scott is fishing for information to see if Picard is onto anything. The others don't realize she has already been corrupted. They're also all facing each other, so they can't tell if the other has a gill coming out of the back of their necks. Picard always blames the first baseman for everything. And sadly, Walker Keel gives out too much information and it does them in in the long run. Aww. Then he wants Picard to tell Beverly he says hello. Picard tells Deanna first, who says, we should tell everybody. Jordy says, I number two. Jordy says, I number three. Oddly, Walker said to tell Beverly he said hello, but Picard didn't pass on the message, so minus one point. Worf says, something's going on. Picard says, let's go check it out. Jordy says, I number four. Look closely. Data is doing research on the great bird of the galaxy, which is why he's not at his post, so minus one point since no one took his place. Jordy says, I number five. That means we get to drink. <laughs> Also, Jordy said all five eyes in a row, so let's drink again. And unfortunately, now that they're all trashed, they come upon the debris of the Horatio. But whose hand is that? Nobody was there a second ago, so minus one point. Beverly's now saying, Jean-Luc, you're going to get an ass whooping now since you didn't tell me that Walker said hello, and now he's dead. The music here is really good, but it's only for a few seconds. Minus one point for Picard leaving a captain's log. There could be a spy on the ship that has access to his log, and it would come back to haunt him real fast. Minus one point for the computer cutting off Data. A computer won't do that. Even Data's thinking, I can't believe the computer just did that. Data discovers the secret. Either they are getting invaded, or the Federation's political parties have infiltrated Starfleet. Data says the Republicans and Democrats have no idea what the other is up to. And again, they believe the first baseman is behind the whole thing. With all this going on, they decide, let's go rogue and fly to Earth. It's not like they are supposed to be patrolling deep space right now. And if there is a conspiracy going on, a stray ship aiming for Earth might get shot down. Down. Minus one point for the captain's log talking down to the audience like we forgot what happened before the commercials. Minus one point for not filing a flight path. Minus one point for new black paper covering the console in the back. Minus one point for Earth not rotating. We're in deep trouble in the future, I see. In the real world, you would hardly ever see three admirals in the same room like that, so minus one point. This would have been done more like a conference call. Picard better have a good answer or he's going to spend the rest of his career peeling potatoes. 
Remix says they're on to us, maybe we should just shoot them down. Incredibly, he actually asked for Deanna's advice. Usually they just ignore her. Deanna says, don't tell the first or second baseman what's going on. And this conversation would not take place in front of the bridge staff, so minus one more point. Card recites, Chancellor Gorkon. We would be delighted to accept your gracious invitation. And now Mr. Burns. The Admiral now says he's afraid, and Kirk now says he's not going to the dinner. I guess he got his point across after all. Admiral Quinn can't make it to the dinner down the hall, but can beam up to the spaceship? That just doesn't sound right. Data says I number six. This is from Star Trek IV, so minus one point. And we already know what's in the case and who's carrying it. Admirals never travel alone. They always have an assistant with them, so minus one point. Riker is directly behind Quinn. He would have a direct line of sight to see the gill sticking out of the back of his neck, but since there's nothing to see, minus one point. I'm under the impression that Quinn and Remick had already been compromised in their previous appearance. Leave comments below if you agree or disagree. Just how far do they go to speak privately? Both of them know the ship inside and out and have keys to everything, so minus one point. Picard is convinced that is not Admiral Quinn, and now he believes that the first, second, and third basement are behind the whole thing. Who is Picard saying energized to? They travel two blocks to speak privately, but the transporter operator is in there, so minus one point. The admirals say welcome home. They're acting like timeshare reps, aren't they? Picard says he prepared a meal too. This is how you make admirals, by having a cook fest. Remick's rank is Lieutenant Commander. How did this form of life not alert the transporter sensors? Admiral Quinn should have stuck to his original plan because this quick change really backfired on him. Admiral Quinn really screwed up here. If they act this way regularly, these creatures would have never been able to take over. The microwave bounces when Riker hits it too. Minus one point for obvious stunt doubles. Minus one point for no security being outside an admiral's quarters. Jonathan Frakes is really good at high kicks, but minus one point for having a glass table on the ship that breaks. It isn't even shattering glass, which is dangerous. His left arm moves, so minus one point. Meanwhile, back on the Star Trek 4 set, minus one point for the exact number of wine glasses set up on the table. Minus one point for them already knowing what happened to the Horatio. The investigation will take weeks. I'd recommend not drinking that right now. It could be poisoned. Look closely, Captain Picard actually does not drink it. Minus one point since the Earth and the Moon don't move sideways. Jordy and Worf were 17 decks away, so minus one point for closer security not showing up. Minus one point for neither Jordy nor Worf, the Chief of Security, having phasers. The creature inside Quinn is acting really strange. He's not covert at all. And minus one point for Jordy flying through cardboard doors. This is all because Quinn wanted to fight a Klingon. Minus one point for the doctor having a phaser. Of course, Gates McFadden is thinking, what a relief, I finally get to shoot someone, so I'm gonna shoot him again. And he's a white male, so he's probably sexist, so I'm gonna shoot him again. And if you look close, while Jordy is getting up, she pushes the trigger again, but nothing comes out, so minus one point. Jordy says, if he could see, he would be seeing stars. Can somebody post in the comments below, can a blind person see stars if they hit their head? Worf says, what is he? That's Yoda for he is what, the second baseman. They're both like, oh look, there's something sticking out of his neck. How come we never saw that before? The admirals are trying to convince Picard he's barking up the wrong tree. Dr. Crusher says, hey look, I have a 3D imaging machine, but wouldn't there be bulges on the back of everyone's neck? So minus one point since none of them have a blue gill or a bulge on the backs of their necks. Remick is a full commander here, so minus one point. Minus one plot point for Data calling Worf back to the bridge. This is just to set up the next scene. This is a beautiful conference room. Aren't those 10 forwards doors? Picard just realized he's on fear factor. Minus one point here. These maggots aren't moving, even though he's not sticking his hands in the jar. This is really a bad way of getting a convert. They should have just drugged him and stuck the creature in when he was out. Picard tries to make his escape through the 10 forward doors, but Riker stops him. Why is he the only one with a gill when we all know it's fake? Now for long drawn out talks, minus one point for Picard not calling the Enterprise to send out a SWAT team. This screenshot turned out kind of racist, didn't it? Shout out to Jonathan Frakes for actually sticking his fingers in live maggots. Did the phaser and the creature leaving kill her? We never really find out, do we? Minus one point for neither of them hiding behind those perfectly good barriers, and minus one point for that painting surviving that explosion. 
Whenever someone says we mean you no harm, you know there's trouble coming. It turns out the mother creature was inside Rimmick all this time. Just a reminder, The Next Generation was in first run syndication and aired at 7 instead of 8, so had to be kid friendly. So what did all those kids watching think of Rimmick's head blowing up and the mother creature exploding? About two days have passed. This comment is unnecessary because if you're in that it's him or me situation, your job is to not go home in a box. And Picard should know killing that mother creature was the only option, so minus one point. Minus one point since this situation wrapped up too cleanly. Minus one point since you don't know the fate of the other admirals or Captain Scott. Minus one point for Rucker waiting two days to tell Picard their strategy. And we never hear from these creatures again since they got assimilated by the Borg. Aww. So who were the invaders? Ursuline Bryant played Trila Scott. Michael Berryman was Captain Ricks with 100 screen credits, usually in the horror genre. He was also in Star Trek 4 IV and 5. Jonathan Farwell was Walker Keel and was on The Young and the Restless. Ray Reinhardt was Aaron. He was on Time After Time and will be back on Voyager. Henry Darrow won an Emmy on Santa Barbara. He will be back on Voyager and Babylon 5. Robert Schengen has several acting awards and has a career in writing. And Ward Costello was on Terror from the Year 5000, Return from Witch Mountain, and War Movies where he played General Marshall. Conspiracy, the short-lived story arc of creatures that almost became the next generation's worst enemy, gets a score of 53%. Yes! Thanks for viewing. Be sure to leave comments below. Click that like button, the share button, the subscribe button. Check out my other videos and playlists, and I will see you again soon.